All right. Hello, Trojans. This is Mr. Smith again, your friendly math teacher, fifth grade math teacher. Um, since we have our test coming up, I think it's great for us and appropriate for us to review the different properties of addition and multiplication. I'm not going to worry too much about addition. That's really simple. We're going to worry about multiplication. The three properties that we will be covering today would be associative property of multiplication, commutative property of multiplication, and distributive property of multiplication. Now you might be saying to yourself, um, you're saying that we should review these different properties. Uh, I'm not too sure that I even know these three properties. If that's the case, I say you do know them. We just have to bring it back to our forefront. We have to think about them again. With that being said, let's look at the associative property of multiplication. Mr. Smith came prepared today. <clears throat> All right, here we have it. Four times three times one. Four times three times one. If we were to solve this problem from left to right, we would first take care of four times three. And what is four times three? We know four times three is equal to 12. But we still need to multiply by our third factor, which is one. 12 times one is equal to 12. That's really simple. A substantive property of multiplication is also really simple. It says we'll still come up with the same product even if we multiply our factors in a different order. Here we multiply from left to right, but on this one, let's do something different. Let's multiply from right to left. One times three. Parentheses around three and one because we're going to multiply those first. According to order of operations, we take care of what's inside the parentheses first. So one times three or three times one is equal to three. We have one more factor to multiply by, and that's four. Four times three is equal to 12. So according to the substantive property, of multiplication, you can multiply factors factors in any which order and you'll still come up with the same product. It works the same way in addition. Now, I think that you know this pretty well, but let me give you a couple of example problems. Actually, this one, since we're pressed with time. Here we have it. Let me erase this and erase this. Let's go with 5 times 2 times 2. And then the same thing on the other side. I want you to use the associative property to come up with the same product. I'll give you, since you're so smart, I'll give you 20 seconds. Do, 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 do. And your time is up. All right. So when we normally multiply, add, subtract, whatever, even divide, we move from left to right. So in this problem, five times two times two, we will first multiply this five by that two. Parentheses around that, since that's what we're doing first. Order of operations, parentheses first. Five times two is equal to 10, and we have one more factor, and that's two. 10 times two is equal to 20. With the associative property of multiplication, we're going to come up with the same product. 
no matter the order in which we multiply. For instance, over here, instead of moving from left to right, I'm going to move from right to left. That means I'm going to multiply this two by that two first. Parentheses around that. Two times two is equal to four. I have to multiply this four by my last factor, which is five. Five times four is equal to 20. Associative property in us for the win. We're good teammates. So this is the associative property of multiplication with just numbers. Let's use variables now. Don't be afraid of letters in a number sentence. No need to be afraid. You guys know what you're doing. And actually, to be quite honest, this will be easier than what we just did. <laughs> All right, according to the associative property of multiplication, these two number sentences are equal, and they will stay equal no matter how we multiply our factors. I would start by multiplying from left to right. That's the way I read. So parentheses around the seven in my variable g. Seven times g, then that times two. Well, on the other side, Say I don't want to read from left to right, multiply from left to right. I want to read and multiply from right to left. I will still come up with the same exact product. Two times G times seven is equal to seven times G times two. Associate the property of multiplication using a smidgen of difference. All right, let's move on from associative to Commutative. If you thought associative was easy, commutative is as well. Alrighty. Commutative. Another way to think of commutative is turn around. But before we do, let's come up with a product. We have 5 times 3. 5 times 3 is equal to what? 15. Now, how can I come up with the same product using the same factors? Huh. I can turn them around. 3 times 5. 3 times 5 is equal to what? 15. My factors 5 and 3 stay the same on the left side and on the right side. The only difference is the factors are turned around. I still come up with the same product. That's the commutative property of multiplication. You can turn the factors around and still come up with the same product. Okay, you might not be believing Mr. Smith at this point. Let's do another problem so I can prove myself right and to prove you right as well because I know you're thinking the same thing as me. You just need some more evidence. All right, let's go with hmm, 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 hmm. my favorite, one of my favorite multiplication facts. Three times four. Three times four, three times four is equal to what? Twelve. How do I show the community property of three times four? And how do I show that it's right? Turn around the factors. Four times Three. Does 4 times 3 equal 12? And if it does, that's the community property of multiplication. Well, 4 times 3 is equal to 12. My factors are the same, and I'm doing the same thing with them. I'm multiplying them. My products are the same, 12 and 12. 